afternoon session for the six days online FTTP on strength of materials one. And a special welcome uh, note to our uh, speaker today, Ms. Uh, VG Kalpana, Assistant Professor, uh, CIT Coimbatore. So let me introduce her to you. So she is currently Assistant Professor in uh, Department of Civil Engineering in CIT Coimbatore. And uh, she has graduated ME Infrastructure Engineering from PhD College of Technology, Coimbatore, and has completed her PhD in 2013. So she has uh, around nine journal publications, and she has uh, been awarded 500 research projects. She is also having one patent and guiding five uh, uh, PhD uh, students. I welcome you once again, ma'am. And let us have a session now on the transfer of loads and stresses in beams. So thank you, ma'am. Am I audible to all of you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, shall I start, ma'am? Yes, madam. I think my screen is visible to all of you. Yes, ma'am. So, thank you for the introduction, ma'am. So, the topic which is uh, given to me is about uh, the basic topic and uh, in uh, strength of materials, which is types of uh, supports, types of loads and uh, different types of beams. And uh, for those uh, statically determinate beams, how to draw the shear force and uh, bending one diagram. So, let me start uh, from this uh, page. Is this page visible? Is the content visible? So I am not going to use any uh, PowerPoint presentation slides. So directly I am using this uh, online uh, platform uh, to do, uh, since it is an analytical paper, I am going to do the problem, solve the problems using this uh, uh, page. I think it will be convenient for you people too and for me too. And another important thing is, if you have any uh, clarifications or any doubts during my session, you please don't wait up to the uh, last uh, minute of the session. You can interact me uh, between the session itself. So, let me start. So, there will be different types of support. So, first one is simple and the other one is roller and uh, hinged support. And the last one is fixed support. So, let me draw. It will take a little time to connect these two. So, what a simple support means? Before that, I just want to explain what is beam. So beam is a horizontal member, a linear horizontal member wherein the dimension of the beam is, the length of the beam is somewhat larger compared to the other two dimensions that is width and depth of the beam or you can say the cross section of the beam. With respect to the cross section, the length of the beam is very large and another thing is the load which is acting on the beam is transverse load that is it is perpendicular to the axis of the beam so hence a beam is a linear member linear structural element where the length is comparatively larger than that of the cross section and it is subjected to transverse loads i think you all know all these things transverse load means perpendicular to the axis of the beam Right, that is uh, one of the structural element in, uh, in our uh, building section. So, how the uh, beam is rest over the uh, another uh, structural element either maybe of wall or maybe on the uh, column means you will be having different types of supports at the ends of the beam. The very first one is simple support. 
so it is nothing but uh, a simple uh, knife edge support maybe on one end or maybe on the other uh, on the other both the ends so this is what a simple support a knife edge support so we can classify these supports based on its movement so whether the translation is there what are all the translations and what are all the rotation so based on these uh, we can uh, identify or we can classify uh, these uh, supports so translation means whether horizontal movement or vertical movement because of external application of load and rotations means in terms of moment so in case of simple uh, support since it is knife edge support when a beam is rest over the support what happens and if it is subjected to some loading in all the type of support the vertical movement is arrested vertical movement since the ends of the beam is sub, uh, supported by some any of the support so what happens means the vers vertical movement is arrested so what happens means there will be some reaction wherever the movement is arrested there will be having some reaction so here since two supports are there we will be having vertical reaction ra and rb in case of simple support only the vertical movement is arrested whereas in case of roller both simple and roller are more or less similar only thing is in simple support once you give some loading in a horizontal way it just moves it it, it allows the horizontal movement movement is permitted so whereas roller this can be applicable in the case of bridges where the bridge structure which is made up of some uh, concrete the deck slab if it is made up of concrete means due to seasonal variation or the temperature variation there will be some expansion and contraction takes place as you all know a thermal expansion will be there or contraction because of temperature variation so that can be taken into consideration by means of these deck slab to be placed over the bearings these bearings are nothing but the rollers so what happened means because of the uh, temperature variation the concrete deck slab will get into expanded or contracted so between the deck slab so be, these bearings are given so this bearings will absorb the expansion and contraction so that it allows the horizontal movement of the uh, deck slab so in that case only we can say it as it's a roller support that is it allows the horizontal movement whereas the vertical movement is restricted so in both simple and roller case both vertical movement is arrested whereas horizontal movement is permitted and also the second part rotation movement movement is also allowed so i'll come later what are all the reactions so this is the uh, difference that is simple and roller whereas the third one hinged support so based on its reaction only we can say whether it is simple or hinged or uh, fixed fixed in right so in case of hinged support the vertical reaction as well as or the vertical movement and horizontal movement is arrested so both will be having vertical reaction if the support is uh, named as a and here it is b so we will be having both vertical reaction 
and horizontal reaction and whereas one support is uh, hinged always and the other support may be of uh, simple so here you will be having only vertical reaction so what is the property of hinged support means the whatever may be the moments are arrested means there you will be having reaction so here both vertical and horizontal movement is arrested sorry there will be some uh, software error that is why i can have this uh, dots and all so we will be having both vertical reaction and horizontal reaction at the support this these two will get exist in the case of hinged support so based on the uh, what are all the movements arrested or prevented the corresponding reaction will be there this according to the newton's third law for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction that is when a ball is uh, allowed to fall down and if there is a floor over here means then what happens means the ball rest on the floor right so what happens means there will be some reaction given to the ball through this floor to restrict its downward movement so this is force on which the ball is uh, moving downwards but there is a floor is there means what happens means the reactive force is acting over the ball to resist its uh, movement so the, the same thing so the beam is subjected to some external force it sub, uh, it can move in the downward direction because of these two supports the vertical movement is arrested hence we can say that the reaction is given by these supports so that the vertical uh, movement is arrested by the beam arrested by these supports hence you will be having vertical reactions ra and rb it depends on the type of support so in case of simple support only the vertical movement is arrested whereas the horizontal movement and the rotation is permitted in in the same case roller too hinged while coming to the hinged support so vertical movement is arrested along with horizontal so we will be having both horizontal reaction and vertical reaction whereas rotation is permitted in case of hinged which means so resisting moment will not be there so vertical movement is arrested means resisting uh, reaction will be there that is ra horizontal movement is arrested means horizontal reaction will be there whereas rotation is permitted hence moment resisting moment will not be there i can write instead of uh, mr resisting moment at support a and at support b is equal to 0 that's why we are writing it as moment at a that is sigma ma equal to 0 or sigma mb equal to 0 while solving the uh, support reaction so which means in case of hinged support the, since the rotation is permitted so resist there won't be any resisting moment hence moment at the support r a or support b is equal to zero so this is the case for hinged support while well, coming for fixed support so the diagrammatic representation of fixed support will be of like this so in case of fixed support from the name itself we can say it won't allow the vertical movement as well as the horizontal movement as well as the rotation so all the uh, two translation as well as uh, rotation is restricted hence you will be having all the three unknowns right so here if i am writing as support a means so i am having ra vertical reaction horizontal reaction ha and there will be resisting moment ma so all the three exist in case of fixed in so we need to find out ra value vertical reaction horizontal reaction and moment since every all the movements are restricted or prevented in case of fixed support so
so what are all the uh, we can combine all these things that is in case of simple support simple support i can write the unknown reactions are that is when a beam is given with simple supports means so at the support what are all the reactions to be uh, find out means in case of simple support the unknown reactions are vertical that is ra comma rb in case of and roller too and the second case hinged the unknowns are ra and rb comma horizontal reaction third one in case of fixed support vertical reaction horizontal reaction and momentum support it depends whether uh, both the ends are fixed or only one end is fixed in case of statically determinate beam we can go with this uh, cantilever beam which is one end is fixed and whereas other end is hinged sorry one end is fixed other end is free so we will be having three unknown reaction vertical horizontal and rotation and in most of the cases we neglect this horizontal reaction why because the beams are always subjected to vertical force if it is of gravity loads means no need to consider this uh, horizontal reaction in case if it is subjected to any inclined loads means then we have to consider this horizontal if the beam is subjected to the like this inclined load in those cases so we can uh, get the value of horizontal reactions too so the other topic is uh, the other heading is types of uh, beams so based on this type of support we'll be having uh, different types of beam simply supported beam again uh, types of beams we can classify into whether it is statically determinate statically indeterminate beam so here in strength of materials we'll be having we are dealing with only statically determinate beams so the classification of statically determinate beams are simply supported cantilever and overhanging beam so simply supported beam means it is rest over the simple support and subjected to some external loading the supports are named as a and b based on the supports and in case of cantilever as we all know one end of the beam is fixed whereas the other end is free so the supports are a is left support whereas the other end of the beam is b and it is it may be subjected to some external force so this is the fixed end in case of third uh, classification so it is a combination of simple and over, uh, cantilever beam sorry so i'm having simple support it it consists of either two spans or three spans so here this portion is simple uh, supported span which is having a span of l1 meter and the other one is so i can mention the uh, names support a support b and support or uh, the end is c so where the portion ab is simple support and bc is a hanging portion or suspended portion so here this portion is a cantilever one and uh, portion ab is simple support so in the overhanging uh, beam we'll be having different uh, classification 
so whether it is one side overhanging or two side overhanging beam so in case of two side overhanging beam sorry on both left and right hand side of the beam right hand side of the support overhanging portion will be there so here you can name the supports so here support a support b whereas i can mention this is c and d so here the portion a b is simple simply supported span whereas a c and b d are the hanging portion cantilever portion so this is one side overhang this is two side overhanging beam or you can call it as double side overhanging beam so all these three are uh, comes under statically determinate beam so what is statically determinate beam means so the unknown reactions in the supports if these unknown reactions are able to find out using equations of statics alone or equations of equilibrium alone means then those beams are comes under statically determinate beams so the simply supported beam fix a cantilever beam and overhanging beam all these three are comes under uh, statically determinate beam and the equations of equilibrium are sigma f equal to 0 sigma m equal to 0 these two are the equations of equilibrium again sigma f can be sigma h equal to 0 sum of all the forces and the forces may be of horizontal or may be of vertical right so if these uh, reaction so as i told already that in case of simple support we will be having horizontal we will be having only the vertical reaction r a r b so two reactions or two unknowns since the uh, support simple support allows the horizontal movement only the vertical movement is arrested so two unknowns r a r b coming to the equation equations of equilibrium we will be having two equation first one is sigma f equal to 0 and sigma m, m equal to 0 so we can use this two equation sigma m equal to 0 in sigma f we can use this sigma v equal to 0 hence the two unknowns can be solved using two equation hence this beam is comes under statically determinate beam whereas coming to the cantilever beam the unknowns are r a and i told that there will be horizontal reaction to since the beam is subjected to the vertical loading so we don't consider the horizontal reaction for the vertical loading there will be vertical movement is arrested so you will be having only the vertical reaction so no need to consider this horizontal whereas the other one is ma so here again we can use sigma m equal to 0 and sigma v equal to 0 so two unknowns can be solved these two equations hence cantilever beam is also comes under statically determinate again coming to the uh, overhanging beam we know that the support reactions are since it is simple support so ra will be there and again rb since the n c is free n there is no rotation that uh, the, sorry since it is a free n that is in case of cantilever the n b is free whereas n c in the overhanging beam that is also free so free means it allows all the movements and rotation there is no restriction for horizontal movement vertical movement as well as rotation so nothing is prevented so it is free to move in any direction hence there is no reaction at the free n hence there is no reaction so here r a and r b are the unknowns whereas in the double side overhanging beam also will be having 
R A and R B. In both the cases, the unknowns are R A R B. Two unknowns. R A R B. Hence, we can solve this using sigma m equal to zero, sigma v equal to zero. Hence, this one uh, overhanging beam is also comes under statically determinate beam. Can I move on to the next uh, topic? Yes. Can anyone please respond? Yes, ma'am. Next one is types of loads. So we'll be having point load and the beam may be subjected to uniform or we can uh, generally call it as distributed loads. So what does point load mean? Over the beam, when the load is acting on a particular point or acted, concentrated over a particular point means then we can say it as that is point load. So this is the cross section of the beam. On this beam, if you consider any point and over this point if a load is acting right and this is the uh, diagrammatic representation for point load uh, line with an arrow arrow indicates in which direction the load is acting so we can uh, mention it as w so when you consider this uh, particular point if you do a microscopic view of this point means it won't be a point so it acts over a particular area but the area compared to the area of the beam the point of application of or the area on which this point load is uh, this load is acting is negligible one that is why we are saying it as point load it won't be a, a major area yes and coming to the distributed load so we will be having two uh, classification under uh, distribution load First one is uniformly distributed load. So the diagrammatic representation of UDL. So or you can uh, we can call it as UDL. So which acts throughout the sorry throughout the length or part of a length of the beam and the load is of uniform rate over the session. So it's a rectangular distribution. Either we can draw like this. So here we'll be having support. So this is UDL and this can be small w sorry and the unit for this UDL is kilonewton per meter whereas for uh, point load it is kilonewton. So what does uniformly distributed load mean if you consider any 1 meter length of the beam. Each unit length of the beam is subjected to same intensity of loading. Sorry. Same intensity of loading. Each unit length. That is why it is kilonewton per meter. 
each and every unit length of the beam is subjected to same intensity that is why uniformly distributed load throughout the length of the beam or over a particular length of the beam if the udl is applied means which is known as so which is nothing but each unit length is subjected to same intensity of w kilo newton that is what uniformly distributed load whereas uniformly other classification is uniformly varying load from the name itself varying load so the rate of loading is not constant whereas in case of uniformly distributed load the rate of uh, loading is constant throughout the length in case of uniformly varying load the rate of loading is there will be some change in loading we can draw maybe it starts from zero at one end and ends to maximum amount of loading at the other end the loading will not be same throughout the length and the change of rate of loading will be of uniform per meter uh, length of the beam is subjected to so it is here it is zero here it is zero kilo newton and here it is w again the loading is kilo newton per meter only thing is each unit length of the beam will not be subjected to same intensity of loading in case of uniformly varying load there will be increase in loading there will be change in loading rate that is what uniformly varying load and here again whether it is a triangular variation or a trapezoidal variation the beam may be of subjected to triangle or trapezoidal variation so what all my drawings are uh, related to a uh, simply supported beam so it may be of triangular variation one end is maximum and the other end is minimum value instead of starting with zero it can start with w1 at one end and w2 at the other end so here it is w w1 and this is w2 that will be increase in loading rate over a length of the beam and here also it is kilo newton per meter w1 kilo newton per meter so this is about uh, different types of loading so the support reaction will be based on the uh, type of support and uh, the amount of loading which the beam is subjected to so intensity of loading to and the type of loading in case of point load means how to find out the support reaction and in case of udl and in case of uniformly varying load how we can convert this uniformly distributed load into uniform uh, point load so the very first step is we have to convert this udl and uniformly varying load into the point load and then we can find the moment at a, any a one support or any one point and uh, we will find the support reaction from there we will move on to the shear force and uh, bending moment diagram so in case of point load it will be easy to finding moment at a support a means force into perpendicular distance whereas in case of udl uniformly distributed load means the very first step is we have to convert that into total load so what is total load means which is nothing but area of loading diagram so here the loading diagram is rectangle so it is uniformly distributed load so the total load is area of loading diagram which is of rectangle so 
area of rectangle is the intensity of loading is w kilo newton per meter and acting throughout the length of the beam so i am mentioning this capital l is the span of the beam hence what i can write is w kilo newton into l which is total load so area of loading diagram since it is rectangle the height of rectangle is w whereas the length of the rectangle is l so the total load is w into l kilo newton so kilo newton per meter into l meters so meter will get cancel so the total load is wl and where this total load acts over the beam that is a center of gravity of loading diagram total load acts i can write tl acts at cg of loading diagram as we all know for a rectangle center of gravity if it is b and d means cg is exactly at the center b by 2 comma d by 2 so here we need to consider only the length of the beam not the uh, depth of the beam that is w where the w is acting hence acts at l by 2 since the load is acting from one end to another throughout the length of the beam so the total load acts at l by 2 distance either from a or from b from a or b or i can say from any of the support so for in case of udl the total load is always area of loading diagram here ud for always udl it is a rectangular one hence it is w into l is the total load which have which we have converted into kilo newton which is a point load and where this total load is acting over the length of the beam means it is exactly at the center which is l by 2 it's nothing but center of gravity of loading diagram so this is how we have to convert uniformly distributed load into a point load during the calculation of shear force and bending moment whereas for a uniformly varying load again the same concept so area of loading diagram if i am considering as a triangular variation so it starts from 0 at b and w kilo newton at a kilo newton per meter at a means total load is area of loading diagram which is and the span i'm considering it as span of the beam is l hence total load is area of loading diagram which is it's a triangle so half into length into height of triangle is w which is equal to w l by 2 is the total load in kilo newton and where it acts means total load acts at cg of loading diagram so for a triangle the center of gravity is if it is this is l l means so from here it is this is the cg 1/3 of l or from this portion it is from this end it is 2/3 of l hence 1/3 of l from Yeah, we have to mention here whether it is from A or from B. So if it is from support A, left support A means the total load acts at one third distance of. So I can draw once again the beam diagram. So beam A B subjected to. So hence the total load is. W L by two at a distance of 
L by 3 or 2L by 3. So this is the conversion. Yes. So we need to remember that whatever may be the loading diagram, the total load will be of area of loading diagram and it will act on the entire uh, at which point the total load acts means center of gravity of whatever may be the loading diagram. Is any doubts? Can I proceed? Yes, anyone is there? Yes, madam, we can proceed, madam. Yes, sir. Since this session is post lunch session, I don't know how many of you are uh, interactive with me. So I have to make you to listen the session. That is a somewhat difficult, uh, tough task. Okay, next uh, we'll move on to the uh, next topic shear force and bending moment. So what does shear force means? It's an algebraic sum of all the forces to the left or right of the section over a beam. If I draw a beam section means, okay. if this is the beam. And having a support. I have to consider so different loads are acting over the beam I'm considering any section EXX right where shear forces with respect to any section to the right of the section or to the left of the section this is the right and left part of the section the algebraic sum sum of forces to the right or left of the section is shear force is nothing but shear force so shear force at x equal to i can say here with x equal to either i can consider the right of the section or left of the section if i consider right of the section means first thing is have to find out what are all the support reactions. Simply I can name it as RB and here RA. Sum of all the forces. I can write W1, W2, W3. So to the right of the section, what are all the forces means? I am having RB, W2 and W3. Algebraic sum means always we have to consider the direction of the forces. So here RB is in upward direction whereas W2 and W3 are in downward direction. So while calculating the shear force, we have to consider the sign convention. So what the convention may be of all the forces which are right to the section and if it is up, upward, I can consider as positive. So to the right of section, all the upward forces and to the left of the section, all the downward forces to be considered as positive. This may be of in opposite direction too. It's up to us how the conversion uh, con uh, sign convention may be. So I'm considering that with respect to any section, the right of the section, all the upward forces and to the left of the section, all the downward forces are positive. Hence, to the right of the section, the downward left of the section upward is to be con considered as negative. So according to my uh, assumption, so here I can uh, write the shear force at any section xx. If I am considering right side means RB is upward. So right up is positive plus RB and left side 
and write up is positive and here w2 w3 are in downward direction so to the right of the section only upward is positive other forces are negative minus w2 minus w3 so that is what shear force with respect to any section to the right or left you can consider all the forces that is algebraic sum of all the forces to the right or left of the section is shear force with respect to any section and only thing is the sign convention what my uh, convention is my assumption is i can consider right up left down positive edo onna nyabam vachitumna we can consider the other uh, directions that is shear force whereas coming to the bending moment so again a beam with some support here is a simple support again i am considering any uh, section xx with respect to any section if the number of forces are given w1 w2 support a support b so again algebraic sum of moment of that is bending moment moment of all the forces to the right or left of the section section xx what we have consider so here again support a having support reaction ra and here rb so with respect to this section if i consider the right of the section means i'm going to take moment about this x so mx equal to sum of moment of all the forces to the right of the section or sum of moment of all the forces to the left of the section anything may be consider right so sum of moment of all the forces to the right of the section means again while considering the moment we have to consider whether the moment is sagging or hogging sign convention for sagging and hogging sagging will be of positive and hogging will be of bending of the beam will be like this negative so this is where the concavity upwards this that is called as sagging where the convexity upwards is hogging moment which is considered to be negative so sagging moments when when a beam is simply supported and if it is subjected to any loading what happens means the beam will bend like this the bending profile of the beam will be like this so which denotes sagging in the case of cantilever if it is subjected to any loading what happens means the bending profile of the beam will be of like this so this is hogging so from the bending profile we can say whether the beam is subjected to um, sagging moment or hogging moment so always in a simply supported beam will be having sagging moment positive bending moment whereas in cantilever beam will be always having hogging which is negative bending moment since the bending profile will be of in this manner so which makes convexity upwards whereas here the bending will be due to external load the bending will be like this which is sagging positive bending moment so while drawing bending moment diagram always in case of simply supported beam everything will be in positive direction whereas for cantilever everything will be of in uh, negative direction so this is the case and again for uh, sagging and hogging with respect to here we are going to write moment about any section and to the right and left of the section now i am considering to the right of the section i am having two forces rb and w so moment of this rb about the section is rb into the distance x so i am considering the distance as x here and here maybe i am considering this as x1 
from the section to the load i am considering as x1 so moment about x is rb into x so moment is load into perpendicular distance so here rb is reaction for the vertical reaction the perpendicular distance is distance means where we are going to take the moment and where the load is acting the distance between the section on which we are taking moment to the line of action of load is the perpendicular distance so for vertical load perpendicular distance is horizontal whereas for horizontal load perpendicular distance is vertical so the distance between the section x to the reaction rb is x so rb into distance x is the moment again while considering w2 i am having w2 into small x okay instead of writing into small x 1 so here we have to consider the sign convention since it is simply supported so i cannot simply say it is all, all the moments are sagging i can say i cannot write as both are positive right again we need to go with another convention that with respect to any section what happen to the beam so if the beam wants to get sagging moment like this in this profile means the beam subjected to clockwise and anti clockwise moment with respect to any section so this will be to the right of the section and here it is left of the section to the right of the section if the beam is subjected to or the moment is this is an anti clockwise moment and to the left of the section this will be of clockwise moment make the beam sagging yes so with respect to section all the anti clockwise so sorry so when will you get sagging moment means with respect to any section the right of the section is subjected to anti clockwise moment and left of the section is subjected to clockwise means you will be getting sagging moment whereas hogging means in the opposite way so right of the section is clockwise left of the section is anti clockwise makes the beam hogging this is sagging this is hogging yes is this clear so while coming to this section xx if i consider rb means rb into the distance which makes rb into distance which makes anti clockwise anti clockwise means positive again w into x1 sorry w2 into x1 which makes clockwise moment so to the right of the section clockwise moment is negative so this is how we have to consider while writing the bending moment at a particular section so sagging will be always right and left is clock anti clockwise and clockwise respectively will give sagging moment whereas hogging will be of to the right of the section any section clockwise moment and if the left of the section is anti clockwise means that makes hogging which is a negative one so we can even change sagging as negative and hogging as positive but in most of the cases always will use positive for sagging and negative for hogging bending moment so this about the uh, shear force and bending moment so while taking the shear force bending moment we need to explain all these uh, introductory part to the students that what are all the different types of support and what each type of support having the uh, different types of unknowns based on the uh, the support which is having some uh, restriction in its movement simple supports means only the vertical movement is arrested horizontal and rotation are permitted so it consists only the vertical reaction whereas hinged means both vertical and horizontal movements are 
arrested hence horizontal and uh, vertical reaction will be there whereas rotation is permitted that is there is no resisting moment so that is the ma equal to zero whereas in case of fixed end all the movements are arrested hence all the reactions will be there and coming to the loading path whether it is subjected to point load udl or uvl uniformly varying load point load means it is in kilo newton udl and uvl means it is a distributed load throughout the length of the beam so we have to convert that into total load so always the total load is area of loading diagram and where it acts means center of gravity of loading diagram it, it, this case is common to both udl as well as uvl so in case of udl the area of loading diagram is rectangle whereas in case of uh, uvl uniformly varying load it may be of triangular variation or it may be of trapezoidal variation even trapezoidal means you can convert that into one triangular portion and one rectangular portion and subsequently you can do the calculation according to the rectangle and triangle and whereas uh, coming to the shear force and bending moment means shear force is algebraic sum of all the forces to the right or left of the section and the uh, bending moment is algebraic sum of moment of all the forces to the left or right of the section and in both the cases we have to consider sign convention whether it is force shear force means it is simply a force so whether it is in upward direction or in the downward direction that is in the case of uh, vertical force in case of horizontal means whether it is from right to left or left to right it's up to us from right to left means it may be positive and from left to right means we can consider it as negative and most of the beams it is always subjected to vertical forces that is gravity uh, forces we'll do the calculation of shear force bending moment only for uh, vertical in only if it is of inclined force means then in that case we'll be getting this horizontal reaction in that case left to right or right to left accordingly we can consider plus or minus and again uh, in case of bending moment whether it is hogging or sagging and when will the beam get sagging moment means with respect to any section right side of the section is subjected to anti clockwise moments and left is subjected to clockwise means it will be a positive sagging and while writing moment about any section maybe both the clockwise and anti clockwise moments will be come so accordingly we have to consider the sign convention whenever sagging comes that is to the right of the section anti clockwise comes means positive clockwise vandha adina we can consider negative signs which is uh, for hogging so these are all the points which we need to inform the students before uh, going for uh, shear force and bending moment diagrams or the calculations of shear force and bending moment shall i move on to the next one calculation of shear force and bending moment for cantilever beam since this consists of some uh, calculation part i want everyone to involve in this uh, calculations and i just need some answers from your side after doing the calculations can i expect yes faculty members who are present here ma'am no one is responding you please unmute your mic and then uh, give me a answer i don't want the uh, answer from the chat box because i'm alone speaking uh, for a lot more time so if it is of interaction section means then uh, that be good for me okay yes ma'am so, yes ma'am thank, we will thank thank you sir thank you so much you people know the uh, classes taking through online how it will be maybe you, uh, we are all experiencing all these thing, uh, things for the last past two years right so that is why i ask you to give some uh, response through the uh, uh, by, by our, what is it instead of chat box 
you just uh, speak through it so the first one is cantilever being subjected to point load at free end with a span of l meters so to draw shear force and bending moment diagram so for which either we can directly move on to the calculation or we can consider any section and with respect to that section we can write the uh, general equation and we'll proceed it right so consider any section section x capital xx at a distance x from a so this is section for distance small x from b which is a free end of cantilever beam so now i'm writing shear force at that section so shear force at this section xx will be i am considering the right of the section or left of the section so if i consider right of the section means shear force is algebraic sum of all the forces so what are all the forces here means here we will be having only the force w and whether it is plus or minus can anyone according to our uh, convention assumption the load is in downward direction to the right of the section what is our assumption right up left down is positive so what about here the w will be positive or negative yes can anyone positive is it positive Yes, that rides to the right of the section all the upward forces are positive so i am considering this section right of this section the load w is in downward direction is it positive or negative it's negative according to our convention right yes so to the right of the section all the upward forces are positive and to the left of the section all the downward forces are positive that is what our assumption so here the section is xx right of the section the force is w w acting in downward section right up left down right up left down is positive so right abindrathu section ku right side upward force edirko adalla plus podunga downward is minus so here it is minus that's all so bending moment at x to the again i am considering the right of the section so force into distance which is w into distance x distance between the line of action of load to the where you are taking moment is x so whether it is plus or minus yes to the right of the section this w into x makes positive or hogging moment sagging or hogging moment w into x is a clockwise moment yes hogging here it is anti clockwise so to the right of the section left of the section so w into x which makes clockwise so to the right of the section clockwise abdina that makes hogging negative which is a negative moment the minus w into x so we have to consider this for, throughout the problem whether it is a simply supported beam or a cantilever or a overhanging beam whatever it may be so plus minus i have to make it exactly so minus x now i am considering so this is a general equation when x equal to 0 i want to draw the shear force bending moment diagram by considering the points ends of the beam alone 
right since it is a cantilever beam i can find the value of shear force and bending moment at a as well as at b so when x equal to 0 that is the section moves over b that is at b what is the shear force value shear force at b so in the general equation wherever x is there x to be replaced by 0 whereas in case of shear force there is no x hence shear force at b equal to minus w and bending moment at b mb so minus w into 0 hence moment at b is 0 and when x equal to l l means at a shear force at a equal to the same value minus w moment at a equal to minus w into l so the answer is minus w l that's all no need to write once again w l yes so with these values we can draw the uh, shear force and bending moment diagram we can draw the beam once again Okay, shear force at this will be of shear force diagram. Shear force at B at A, which is of L meter span. Shear force at B is minus W. So this is the reference line. So minus is below the reference line, it's minus W and again shear force at A is also minus W. So I can connect this. So this is shear force value and whereas the bending moment diagram is at B it is 0 whereas at A it is minus W into L. So how to connect this uh, 0 and WL that is the thing here. So when you consider instead of this x meter if the L is 5 meters I am giving as 5 meters. So what about bending moment at 1 meter from B, 2 meter from B, 3 meter, 4 meter and 5 meter. Each 1 meter what about the bending moment value. So W into 1 whereas at 2 meters W into 2. 3 meters w into 3 so the bending moment value keeps on increasing at a constant rate hence we have to draw the connect the value of bending moment from 0 to w as linear line because the rate of increase of bending moment is linear sorry it's a constant increase in rate with respect to distance hence i have to draw a linear line and again it's a negative bending moment the hogging moment value of w l this is a bending moment diagram bending moment diagram yes so for a point load always shear force diagram will be of rectangle and bending moment diagram will be of triangle whereas for the other uh, distributed loads we will see one by one can I move to the next one cantilever with some UDL I can even draw UDL in this manner as you all know so it's a rectangular distribution 
which denotes the same intensity of loading and always while denoting UDL in a common term it should be of small w whereas point load it's of capital W. So the ends are A and the free end is B having a length of cantilever as small l meters. So here again I can consider any section AXX at a distance x from b. Now I can write shear force at x. Can anyone please? To the right of the section the load is w kilo newton and here for since it is udl the total load is area of loading diagram which is here small w and acting we are considering only for the x distance so which is w into x and again to the right of the uh, section upward force are positive here w kilo newton is acting in downward direction hence it is minus so for each and every problem right up left down positive hence it is minus small w into x here it, you, you cannot write it as w into l. We are considering this section and to the right of the section what are all the forces. In this, with respect to this section what are all the other forces which are acting to the right of this section. That is consider. So uh, this section is acting at a dis this section is considered at a distance of small x from b. So UDL the total load is w into the distance of section from B only for small x right and bending moment at that section mx will be equal to total load acting at here it is only a small portion of the loading is considered that is x distance hence the total load is w x acts at x by 2 distance either from B or from the section which we have considered in the x by 2 x by 2 hence mx equal to total load into distance moment about this section so force into moment about this section Abdina force into distance so force is Wx and the distance between the section where we are going to take the moment and the line of action of force is x by 2. Hence it is Wx into x by 2. And whether it is positive or negative. To the right of the section Wx into x by 2 which makes which makes clockwise or anti-clockwise moment. It's a clockwise moment. So with respect to any section, to the right is clockwise and left is anti-clockwise makes hogging. So hence it is minus Wx into x by 2, which is equal to minus Wx square by 2. Now I can find the bending moment and shear force at different portion of the beam by substituting x, replacing x with different values. When x equal to 0, shear force at b equal to minus w into 0 which is equal to 0 and moment at x equal to again replace x with 0, everything will be of 0. So bending moment and shear force at free end of cantilever beam due to uniformly distributed load is 0. And when x equal to L, shear force at B equal to minus W into L and bending moment at B, moment at B equal to minus W L L square by 2. 
So now I can draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. And the span is L meter. Sorry. The support A and the free and B. You can draw the extension lines. So the shear force diagram will be at B it is 0 and whereas at A sorry so here it is when x equal to L means both shear force and bending moment values are at A. M A and S of A. So shear force at A is W L. Again it's a minus W L. So how to connect it? So for which we can consider each uh, length. So instead of L meter, I can say it as 5 meters means so shear force at B is 0, when x equal to 1 meter, shear force is w, 1 W, when x equal to 2, 2 means 2 W and 3 W, 4 W, 5 W. So there is an increase in shear force value and that too it is a constant rate of increase. So it is a linear line from 0 to, that is from B to, sorry, from B to a. So this is the shear force diagram. Whereas a bending moment diagram will be so since it is uh, having a degree of uh, two degrees of uh, equation so it will be of and for udl as we all know it starts from zero and the value is w l square by two so what we have to do is we have to connect it through it's a parabolic curve w l square by two hence it is a parabolic curve and which again hogging bending moment negative yes so just check with the previous one so where in case of point load I forgot to draw the load for point load shear force diagram is rectangle bending moment diagram is triangle whereas for UDL shear force is triangle and the bending moment diagram is a parabolic one since it is W L square by 2, the equation consists of second order equation, hence it is a parabolic equation. So, we can connect the uh, two different ends by means of a parabolic line. Shall we do the problems or uh, can I go with the simply supported beam? Some uh, simple examples in uh, cantilever. Yes. Okay, I'll do some problems in cantilever.
Ma'am, I need some doubt, ma'am. Yes, sir. Ma'am, if a uh, cantilever beam carries a uh, UDL uh, at the free and half of the portion, so how to calculate, ma'am? Can we do that through the problem, sir, instead of doing with uh, some W or... Yeah, um, uh, if, if UDL uh, carries, uh, uh, carries a half of the length uh, and UDL starts uh, from uh, free end. Free end. Yes, sir, I'll yes. do the problem. Yeah, I'll okay, do the ma'am. problem now. So we'll do the problem with some W instead of W kilonewton per meter. I can yes. do it 5 kilonewton and for 2 meters and the whole span is 5 meters. Like that we'll do the problem. Yeah, I'll okay, start ma'am. with that problem. Yeah, I'll okay, start okay. with that problem, sir. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. So consider a cantilever beam. With support A and free and B subjected to UDL of whatever sir said, some I can take it as 5 kN per meter over a length of I can consider a 2 meter and the length of the beam is 6 meters. So for this problem, we need to draw shear force and bending moment diagram. And uh, for cantilever, there is no need to find out the support reaction. Whatever the shear force value at A will be the shear uh, reaction at A. And whatever the bending moment value at A is the resisting moment uh, that I forgot to say. So here, the support reaction R A is nothing but whatever the value of WL. So this is RA and MA is the bending moment value. Sum of moment of all the forces to the right of support is nothing but MA which is WL squared by 2 whereas in the previous case also RA is W and MA is WL. Yes? Okay. Coming to this problem. So either you can consider with respect to x, consider any section xx and you can proceed it or we can directly find moment at different points or shear force at different points. So I will consider the point C over here. Now I will find the shear force value at shear force at B, shear force at C and shear force at A. So to find the shear force value at B, as you know that at B means there is no load. So it starts from B. So or else I will consider any section. So always finding shear force and bending one, it's better to consider any section with respect to that section to the right and left of the section. If you take shear force values means that will be easy. So now the section is very close to point B. That is, if it is 2 meters of UDL means I am considering 0 0.00001 0, 0, 0, 0, like that. So, whatever may be the distance, there will be some load 5 kN per meter into the distance will give you the shear force value. Whereas, exactly at point B, the shear force is 0. That is what we have found in the previous thing. So, shear force value at distance Wx when x equal to 0 means the shear force exactly at point B is 0 and after which it keeps on increasing. Yes? So, here it is 0 and then it keeps on increasing. So, here shear force at B is 0 whereas shear force at C it is and as you know it is hogging moment so I am directly writing it as negative. So, C consider the section C here either exactly or on the point C or to the left or right of C. So now I am considering exactly at C. So to the right of C, what are all the forces? So here it is 5 kN per meter which is an UDL. Hence the total load is, yes, what is the total load? To the right of C, the total load is, UDL is acting over 2 meter 10 kilo newton. yes 5 into 2 it is 10 kilo newton meter you just have a practice of writing the total load as load into distance since the load is given only for the part of the beam 
maybe the students can have a practice of 5 into 6, 30, total distance, instead of writing that, so we will have a practice of writing 5 into 2 for which distance the load is acting. So total load is 5 into 2 which is equal to next 10 kilo Newton meter, like this you can write, sorry 10 kilo Newton only, it is a shear force, so minus total load is 5 into 2 equal to minus 10 kilo Newton. When coming to the uh, portion A, shear force at A means after the point C, there is no load between A and C. Hence, if you consider any section here to the right of the section, what about the total load? It is again 5 into 2. If you consider any section over here to the right of the section, what about the total load? So, the load is acting between only C and B. There is no loads between A and C. So, between A and C, whatever the load, the shear force because of the uh, load 5 kilo Newton per meter will be same throughout the remaining portion of the beam AC. Hence, it is shear force at A is to the right of A. What are all the forces mean? Sum of all the forces here. The load is UDL of 5 into 2 total load which is 10 kilo Newton, 10 kilo Newton. Yes? Is this clear? Finding shear force yeah. value? Yeah, clear ma'am. Yes. Coming to the bending moment, as you know, moment at B, since the Point B is free. There is no bending moment. There is no force. No, no reaction. So, moment at B is 0. And moment at C. So, consider moment at C in this point. So, to the right of C, the total load into distance. So, this total load acts at 2 by 2 meter from since it is a rectangular variation the center of gravity is half of the length so the length is 2 meter not 6 meter u del is acting only for 2 meter so 2 by 2 meter from b or c both are same right so upper moment at c equal to the total load 5 into 2 acting at 2 by 2 meters it is so that can be converted into total load 5 into 2 and we, we want to take moment about C. The distance is 2 by 2 meter. Yes, so total load into distance. So that makes to the right of the section clockwise moment is hogging. So which is minus 10 kilo Newton meter. Now, moment at A. Yes, moment at A means, so uh, my fixed end is here. So, this is the point C. Total load is 5 into 2. And here the distance is 2 by 2. The remaining distance is out of 6 meter here. Uh, 2 means 4 meter the distance between A and C. So, what is the uh, moment at A? Total load 5 into 2 into the distance is moment about A. So, force into the distance between A and where the total load is acting. That is if you consider it as P1, the distance between A and P1 which is 2 by 2 plus 4 meters. So, always in case of UDL or UVL, you should ask the students to write like this, 5 in total load into distance. Don't simply ask them to write WX square by 2 or WL square by 2. That is not a good practice. So, once they have practiced well means then they can write it. Before that, while doing shear force and bending moment calculation and all, it is better for writing uh, total load into distance for both UDL and UVL. Right? So, 5 into 2 is total load and the distance between where the load is acting and to the 
where you are taking moment is 4 meter plus 2 by 2. Hence what answer? 4 plus 1, 5. So it is 50 kilonewton, kilonewton meter. Yes? Can I ask one question? Can anyone get me the value of moment at um, between the point A and C that is moment at 2, 4 meter from B. M 4 meter from B. Yes? That is D, point D. Can anyone? Minus 5 into 2 into 2 by 2 plus plus yes point D is 2 yes hence the answer is 30 kilo newton meter in case so we can split this the distance between A and C between A and C is 4 meter 1 meter 2 meter 3 and 4 meter yes can we so moment at 1 meter from C 2 meter from C 3 meter and 4 meter why I am saying is this is how you have to while drawing the bending one diagram you may have a doubt how to connect the point between A and C. So the, for that only I am asking to find the moment between uh, these two points, right? So now we can, we will draw the bending moment and shear force diagram for the given beam with the loading. So the loading is of uh, only for 2 meter. So 2 meter and this is 4 meter. So the shear force diagram will be, so shear force at A, sorry at B, that is at the free end is 0, whereas at C, this is the point C, it is 10 kilo Newton, so 10 kilo Newton and at A is also 10 kilo Newton. So how to connect it from B to C? As you know, for the shear force diagram, for UDL, it is a linear line or shear force at 1 meter, 2 meter, 0.55 meter side thing, it is a linear line. So, from B to C, it is a straight line or uh, the linear line. And then, between these two points from A to C, there is no load between A and C. So, whatever may be the 10 kilo Newton will be of maintaining up to point A or support A. Hence, this is the shear force diagram which is 10 kilo Newton. Yes? bending moment diagram so how to connect it so bending moment at uh, B is 0 whereas bending moment at C is 10 kilo Newton first I am marking the points 
10 and bending moment at A is 50 kilo Newton meter. So how to connect 0 to C that is 10 for UDL as we know it is WL square by 2 it is a parabola yes. So I am connecting this with parabola and from C to A how can I connect it whether it is a linear line or again a parabolic line. Linear line. Linear line. How? Why not because parabola? Uh, the shear force is yes. a straight line. So the load is distributed in a linear line. Linear, bending moment. Because there is or no load at the it? moment. You... No, no, no. Actually, uh, how we can identify is, so moment at C is 10 kilo Newton, whereas moment at A is 50 kilo Newton. That's what I ask you to find out moment between these two points. If you consider consider from C it is 1 kilometer 1 meters means instead of this 2 it will be of 1 so 2 by 2 plus 1 which is 2 meters so up 20 varu at the 3 meter 2 meters na 30 3 meters na 40 4 meters you will be getting 50 so there will be a linear variation between A and C so you have to connect it through a linear line Oh God. Yes. So this again hogging moment of here the value is 50 kilo Newton meter. Here it is 10 kilo Newton meter. You can do all the hatching and everything because I can't do this here using this pen. Yes, sir, is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Can ask me uh, to do the problem? Yes. Yeah. Wherever you will be having doubt between if there is any loads yeah. means better you can find the shear force and bending moment values between those two points so that you can have idea of how to connect it. Whether it is a parabola or maybe of a straight line or a linear line. Okay, ma'am. Yes, sir. Okay. Shall I move on to the next problem? Okay, ma'am. Next. Shall we have a great one? Yes, sir. By uh, three fifteen. Okay, it's three ten. Okay, we'll have break.